Hello, it's me Yvonne, your local non-binary witch, and I'd like to share uh, about mythology for Wiccans. And uh, I wrote about this in oh, hang on, All Acts of Love and Pleasure, um, inclusive Wicca. Um, it's not showing up terribly well on this camera for some reason. Uh, here we go. Um, so uh, why do I think that these particular myths are important for Wiccans? Well, uh, Wicca is a religion uh, that arose out of the islands of Britain. If you're practicing Wicca somewhere else, then feel free to substitute for these um, your own local mythology and traditions. Uh, but if you are a Wiccan of British heritage or in Britain, then I highly recommend these myth myths um, because they come up in our rituals and in our traditions. So one of the first ones that I would recommend would be the story of Demeter and Persephone. How this is obviously Greek mythology, so not specifically relevant to any particular, well, it's very relevant to Greece, not necessarily relevant to anywhere else. Um, but the story of Demeter and Persephone is clearly very important to European mythology generally. Um, and it relates to the idea of descending into the underworld to retrieve the parts of ourselves that we have suppressed and lost. And it's also a seasonal myth about the coming of winter and the return of spring. So clearly that myth is really important. Uh, so in that myth, um, Hades comes along, uh, Persephone is dancing through the meadows and Hades comes along and depending on your version of the story, either abducts her and carries her off to the underworld or she goes with him willingly. Um, but either way, she disappears and her mum Demeter has no idea where she's gone. So Demeter is understandably upset and basically stops looking after the plants and trees and flowers and lets it all fade and die. And that's how we get the first winter. So then um, Hecate goes, uh, goes to the rest of the gods on Olympus and says, um, hey, uh, Demeter's really upset. Uh, we need to do something. And also, um, uh, you know, we don't want perpetual winter in the world. Uh, so the gods intervene and they tell um, Hades that he's got to give Persephone back for a good part of the year. Now, meanwhile, while Persephone is gone and Demeter is mourning, uh, another goddess, Balbo, who is a goddess of dance and tr tricksters and, and belly laughter, basically, comes along and gets drunk, gets to meet her drunk, and they have a good girls' night out on the town, um, bemoaning, you know, the, the horrible sadness of, Pemita, of Persephone having gone. Um, so Balbo is one of my favourite goddesses, so she should always be mentioned in this story. Um, Anyway, the gods rule that Hades has to give Persephone back for part of the year, and he offers Persephone a pomegranate, and depending on how many seeds she eats, that's how many months she has to stay in the underworld. So she eats six seeds, and so she has to stay in the underworld for six months, and that's the six months of winter. So as you can see, very seasonal myth. Um, another one to look for is Inanna's descent into the underworld, and... Uh, there's some epic Sumerian poetry about this, which is well worth reading. Uh, and, and that's also relevant for similar reasons. Um, and then another one that would be really important would be Odin's quest for the runes. Um, so Odin sacrifices himself to himself by hanging on the world tree for nine days and nights. And while he's there, he looks down and he sees the runes in the depths of space. And that's how he gets, that's how he discovers the runes. Um, so it's not specifically relevant to any particular um, Wiccan ritual, but it's a great story. And 
I just I really like Norse mythology so I think we should all know about Norse mythology. Um, another one that's really important and very linked to um, the May games, the, the festivities of May Day, is Robin Hood and Maid Marian. Now, Robin Hood is a great story. Um, there are, it's one of the oldest stories in English uh, that we have written down. Um, you know, he robs from the rich and he gives to the poor and he falls in love with Maid Marian. And if you're of a certain age, you might remember the classic series, Robin of Sherwood, um, that was written by um, the same guy that wrote Cat Weasel. <laughs> and, um, uh, so Robin Hood and Maid Marian, um, definitely something to celebrate for May Day. And if you, you know, Beltane, um, May Day is one of our favorite festivals. Um, Gotta stop calling it Beltane because that's the Irish name for it and the Irish want it back. Uh, and also that's terrible mispronunciation. It's actually Beltane. Um, but anyway, so May Day um, and the May Games with, with various dancing and building a bower for Robin Hood and Maid Marian were celebrated in England during the month of May. So definitely a good a made a activity to get to do. Um, so Robin was the Lord of the Greenwood and the symbol of freedom from oppression. So good stuff. Another thing that's really important, uh, the stories of King Arthur and the Holy Grail. And these are often associated with Midsummer in Wicca. They're the basis for our notions of chivalry and honourable conduct and they also explore the mystery of the relationship between the sexes. Um, and also really importantly, the Grail myths contain the story of the Grail Knight and the Fisher King, uh, which is clearly a story of two men coming together to create fertility. So that's a really important story. You should definitely go read that. Um, in fact, while you're at it, go read the whole of the Mabinogian uh, especially the stories of Poish and Rhiannon and Gwydion, because those are really important and a huge part of our heritage. Um, they are Welsh, um, and the, the Welsh stories are really important too. And that's actually ultimately where the whole King Arthur thing came from. I think also another Greek story is very important to learn about the goddess Hecate, because she's the original goddess of witches, and it's her you know, the, the witches of Thessaly, who were some of the earliest recorded witches, um, were worshippers of Hecate. So, um, and also the witches of Thessaly are the earliest depiction of drawing down the moon. So again, well worth your time finding out more about Hecate. In fact, there's an entire group of people who like to do devotions to Hecate, um, one of whom is Sarita Deste, who is um, the proprietor of Avalonia Books, uh, which published um, All Acts of Love and Pleasure, which is refusing to show up nicely on screen. Um, uh, so yeah, check out Hecate. Um, stories of the moon, really important. Uh, it's interesting to note that some cultures have a female moon goddess, and other cultures have a male moon god. So have a look at different cultures there as well. Uh, obviously the moon is important because it's associated with witches and also it's associated with hares and hares are often associated with witches too. So who doesn't love the moon basically because you know witchcraft happens at night and it's always works better when the moon is full uh, so you can see where you're going in the woods. Very important. That and obviously the phases of the moon are really magical. Um, because waxing moon means the energy is increasing and waning moon means it's ebbing away and you can do different type of magic depending on the phases of the moon. So, um, yeah, moon, really important, phases of the moon, you know, we have um, esbats uh, on the moon phases, right? Um, Another thing to learn about, it's really important, is the wild hunt. And the wild hunt is held to travel along the spirit roads um, throughout the Indo-European world. Like, there's a wild hunt in India, 
um it's not called that it's called the the um rudra and the marots but it's the same idea uh it's in southern europe where the leader of the wild hunt is hecate um it's in northern europe where the leader of the wild hunt is odin um and also uh, a lot of there's a lot of witchy motifs within the stories of the wild hunt so that's really important um, and also important, um, the Lord of the Animals and the Lady of the Flappers. Now, there are various different deities associated with these two archetypes. Um, the Horned God is a very obvious example of the Lord of the Animals. Um, and you can, uh, Blod Iwedd from Welsh mythology can be the Lady of the Flowers, but there are, there's also Flora and many different deities that are associated with, with flowers. And these two often appear together in different stories. So, and they seem to be the deities of the forest. So it makes sense to me that, that these were the original deities of Wicca. I mean, obviously we have, um, or at least the witch cult, right? Because uh, Wicca is <laughs> started in the 20th century. Um, but like, they're really important archetypes and they're to do with fertility. Um, and they're clearly associated, they're clearly very old and they're associated with the kinds of things that Wiccans are into. So it makes sense. Um, and finally, just folklore and folk tales in general, right? Because um, a lot of our seasonal activities are associated with different folk tales. Uh, the rituals are based on different folk tales. So one example is John Barleycorn at Lammas. So that's a really important one to think about too. Um, so another thing you could do is think about learning folk songs to sing during the feast. That would be fun. Um, and obviously while we're at it, we wanna make sure that we're not doing cultural appropriation. Uh, so let's learn about um, our own mythology um, from our own culture. Can, I mean, obviously learn about other cultures too, but like don't steal their rituals because that's bad. Um, anyway, uh, also worth thinking about storytelling, mama's plays, Morris dancing, wassailing. Um, I always love doing wassailing in January. Um, well, January in the UK, it's kind of more February, March in Canada because it's because there's so much snow here. Um, but yeah, like wassailing, really important. Um, I almost regard it as a ninth Sabbath because I love it so much. So anyway, um, so check out these different stories and they will enrich your craft, which is what it's all about. So have fun, stay safe and bless the bee. <laughs>